This happened about a month ago, but I couldn't decide if I should post it or not. I'm kind of a paranoid person and didn't know if I was going to deal with something like this again if I post about it. But since it's been about a month and nothing has happened again, I thought I'd share it. I would like to point out that English is not my first language, so please excuse me for any errors in the story. Here it is. I'm a 22-year-old girl from Bulgaria, studying art in another town. I was back home to my parents' house for Christmas vacation, so this happened a little after New Year's. My parents' house is in a little village near a big town, where I grew up. We moved in the village and we now live in a two-story house. I was sitting one night in my room, drawing in my sketchbook and listening to some amazing horror stories on YouTube, as I usually do. It was about 2 o'clock and I was immersed in a scary story, not knowing that I would be living in my own horror story real soon. It started with me receiving a notification from Snapchat that someone added me. I was kind of confused but still opened it and saw that someone with the username Lappy789 added me as a friend. Now, I would like to explain why was this weird to me. I don't use Snapchat anymore. I just have it on my phone for no reason at all. None of my friends use it since Instagram got the story thing and we all started to use that instead. I have very little friends on Snapchat and none of them use it, so I didn't think that it was somebody I know. And I don't have my location on or Bitmoji or whatever it's called that can give away my location and my username to people nearby. I don't know if that's what it does. Like I said, I haven't been using Snapchat in a while. Oh, I also didn't have my username written anywhere on my social media. Moving on. Out of curiosity, I added Lappy789 and opened her profile to see if they had a picture or something that could tell me who this was. There was nothing, only their Snapchat score, which was about 7. I set my phone on my desk and started to rewind the video to listen to the parts that I missed while I was distracted with the phone. As I was getting ready to go back to sketching, when I got a notification that Lappy789 sent me a snap. I opened it and it was a picture of grass taken with flashlight. I looked at it confused and then went to chat box to type, what is this? Who are you? Lappy789 received it. Then it said that they read it, but they didn't respond. At this point, I started to ask all of my friends if it was one of them or if they had given my username to someone, but no one confessed. Next snap came and it was a picture of what looked like a red tile. I was growing very impatient and once again, I texted the person asking who he is and if we know each other. They saw my message and didn't respond. Next snap came and I was prepared to start screenshotting to show my boyfriend. It was a picture of what it looked like a little knob, but I couldn't see what it was exactly. I failed to screenshot it, so I had to replay the snap. When I screenshotted it, I want to look at the picture and realize that this was a little closing mechanism on our backyard gazebo. Here are the two pictures. The first one is the screenshot and the second I took the next day in daylight for you to see better. Screenshot pick and my pick. At this point, I'm slowly realizing that this person is sending me Snapchats from my backyard. And by the way, it's not so easy for someone to come to our backyard as we have a very tall fence and you have to take your time and scout the place around to find a possible way to climb the fence. And it was dark, so it would be difficult. That to me meant that whoever this was... They have been looking around during the day to find a way to get in. I stood up from my desk and ran to turn off all the lights. When it was dark, I tried to peek through my window shades to the backyard, but it was a very cloudy and dark night, so I didn't see anything. Next snap came, and like last time, I was ready to screenshot. When I opened the snap, I nearly screamed. It was a picture of the tip of a ceramic abstract sculpture that we have in our backyard. Sculpture. I ran out of my room, not knowing what to do. For some strange reason, I didn't want to wake up my dad and tell me what was going on. My mom was sleeping downstairs on the couch, and I was upstairs trying to figure out how to open the super loud and screechy door to our terrace without waking up my parents and letting that freak know what I was doing. I battled with the door for about 30 seconds, but I managed to open it quietly and carefully stepped outside to look at the backyard. Didn't see anything. I looked and I looked, trying to stay as low as I can so that the snapper wouldn't see me, but I couldn't see anything. I went inside, once again, trying my best to be as quiet as possible, when I received another Snapchat from Lappy789. 
It was a picture of my mom, sleeping on the couch, taken from outside through a crack in the blinds. This freak took a fucking photo of my M.O. As shocked and terrified I was, I still managed to screenshot it. Mom, at this point I lost it. I started screaming for my dad. He came out of the bedroom and tried to calm me down as I was trying to explain to him that there was somebody in our backyard. I could see that he didn't really take me seriously, but he went outside anyways carrying his gun. My mom was awake now, trying to calm me down as I was hyperventilating, failing to explain to her what Snapchat was. My dad came inside after checking everywhere and said that he didn't find anybody. I showed them the pictures and they seemed disturbed now, but said that it was probably a kid or one of my friends trying to mess with us. The thing is that I don't live in the big town that I lived in before we moved to the nearby village. All of my friends live either in my hometown or other towns in the country, and I don't know anyone in the village that I live in now. So the idea that it might have been somebody I know didn't seem right to me. I went in my room when I calmed down and checked my phone, remembering that I didn't look if I had any new snaps after I shower my parents the pictures. I had three new snaps from Lappy789. They were a picture of our front gate, which I couldn't screenshot, and two messages, saying see you soon. Bye. Messages. I immediately blocked the account. I barely slept that night. I texted and called all of my friends, begging them to confess if it was one of them, but nobody did. When I told what happened to my boyfriend, he asked everybody that he knew, but still nothing. We tried to find the account, but we soon found out that they had deactivated it. There was no one in the name of Lappy789 anymore. I deleted Snapchat that night, and don't think I'll ever use it again. The next day I went outside to look around and see if the creep left something behind, and I saw footprints on a little muddy patch near the place that they took the photo of my mom. Footprints. My dad doesn't seem to believe it was the footprints of the intruder, saying that it was probably one of us stepping there, but I'm pretty sure they weren't ours. To this day, I still don't know who it was. I've asked everyone that I know, but nothing has come up of it. I still wonder what their intentions were. Were they trying to scare me? Were they stalking me? Who were they? How did they find me? How did they enter my backyard? Do they still send me Snapchats? I wouldn't know. I deleted the app. A few weeks passed, and life seemed to return to normal. I tried to move on from the incident, though it still haunted me at night. Every sound outside would make my heart race, and I'd often find myself looking out the window, scanning the darkness for any signs of movement. The terrifying thought that someone had been lurking so close, watching us, was impossible to shake. But slowly, I began to convince myself that maybe it was just some prank. Maybe my dad was right, and it was nothing more than a local kid messing around. That all changed one evening when I was walking home from the grocery store. It was just before dusk, the sky painted in shades of deep purple and orange. The village streets were quiet, as usual, and I could hear the distant rustling of leaves in the wind. As I approached the front gate of our house, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Propped against the gate was a small envelope. I hesitated, but curiosity got the better of me. With trembling hands, I picked it up and tore it open. Inside was a single photo. My heart nearly stopped. It was a picture of me. Taken that very day, it was a candid shot of me walking out of the grocery store, the plastic bags in my hand. The same bags I was holding at that very moment. I dropped everything and sprinted inside the house, locking the door behind me. My mind was racing. How was this happening again? Why hadn't it stopped? Breathlessly, I checked every door and window, ensuring they were locked. The house was eerily quiet, and the weight of the envelope in my pocket seemed to grow heavier by the second. I finally gathered enough courage to tell my parents everything. My dad immediately called the police, while my mom tried to console me. The police arrived later that night and took the photo as evidence. They reassured us that they'd investigate, but as days went by, nothing new came up. No clues, no suspects. Weeks passed without incident, and life returned to its uneasy normal. I was still jumpy, but I tried to distract myself with school and art. One evening, however, while sketching in my room, I noticed something peculiar. My phone, which had been sitting on my desk, lit up with a notification. It was from a new Snapchat account. 
The username was different this time, something like Lappy underscore new. I stared at the screen, my heart pounding in my chest. Against my better judgment, I opened the notification. There was no message, no photo this time. Just a blank screen with one ominous line of text. Miss me? Miss me? Those two words flashed on my screen. A chill ran down my spine, but this time, fear turned into anger. I decided I wasn't going to let this stalker control my life anymore. Instead of panicking, I reached out to some friends who knew a lot about cybersecurity. I told them everything that happened. They explained a few important things. First of all, I needed to stop interacting with the messages. Every time I opened a snap or replied, it could confirm to the stalker that I was seeing them and might even be giving away my location. One of my friends advised me to immediately change all my passwords and make sure my accounts were protected with two-factor authentication. They also suggested I use a VPN and get rid of any apps I didn't need, starting with Snapchat. I followed all their advice, determined to take control. But most importantly, I went back to the police. This time, I didn't just show them the screenshots and tell them about the new account. I insisted that they take this seriously. At first, they didn't seem very interested, but I pushed for them to consult with their cybersecurity experts. A few days later, the police got back to me. They had traced the IP address where the messages were coming from. It turned out to be a teenager from my village who thought the whole thing was just a prank. But of course, this was no joke. Stalking, even if it seems like fun, can seriously traumatize someone. The police talked to his parents, and they assured me that he wouldn't bother me again. He also sent me an apology through his parents. After this whole experience, I learned a few valuable lessons. Never ignore warning signs. If something feels off, don't hesitate or be embarrassed to speak up. Cybersecurity is important. We often take the protection of our online data for granted, but it can have serious consequences if we're not careful. Reach out to people you trust. Don't be afraid to ask friends, family, or experts for help. It can be the key to solving the problem. Always follow up with the authorities. Even if the police don't seem to take it seriously at first, it's important to stand your ground and demand your rights. This whole situation made me realize how crucial it is to protect yourself, both online and in real life. Since then, I've become much more cautious about my security and try to help others do the same.